Hi, this is Phil Chandler, and we're going to do a cutout today. This is the first one I've done uh, on a building in this way. So uh, don't, please don't take this as any form of instruction manual. This is, this is just us doing what we think is right to rescue these bees. Now the situation is that we've got, we've taken the, um, the rendering off this old building, um, enough of it to expose the bees. This building is going to be demolished, or this part of the building is going to be demolished next week, so we've got no leeway at all in terms of timing. It's the middle of October 2012, so ooh, it's late in the season. Um, these bees don't look to me like they've got much in the way of stores at all, although they are still working the ivy quite hard. So their chances of getting through the winter at the moment are pretty slim, and in, as the building is going to be knocked down, they're actually zero <laughs> unless we do something about them. So. We've got a sketchy plan, which you'll uh, hopefully see unfold as we go. There's a sound of water in the background. That's because the there's down right down there. There's a, a little mountain stream going fed into a pipe that's coming off Dartmoor, and uh, so you're going to have a, a little trickle of of water in the background of this video for its entirety. So we're, I'm just going to hitch this video camera up somewhere, and um, the plan is to get them comb by comb into a Langstroth nuke box which is down here and this is Joe, say hi Joe. Hi Joe. <laughs> and down here there's a, a Langstroth polystyrene nuke box and we're going to attempt to tie these combs into Langstroth frames. I don't usually use Langstroth equipment but I happen to have this lying around in the workshop so let's see what we can do. Oh by the way this is uh, this is the ruins of an old uh, medieval priory which is right next to where we're working here so there's some quite interesting stuff down here there's a, um, a stone trough there a little archway and there's a little mysterious little tunnel disappearing who knows where and uh, so there you go old stone built priory from who knows when 13th century maybe I'm guessing Anyway, back to the job in hand. I'm standing on a, a rather thin slow stone slab over a 10 foot drop, so I've got to be a bit careful with my footing here. The good news is I don't think there's anything going on up there. Right. I think they're landing here because they're used to it. And then they're coming in this way because that's what they've always done when they're yeah. landing yeah, this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now the comb, this bit of wood here is actually acting as a kind of brace, brace all the way through. And I'm wondering whether... If you take it, how much is going to go in one... Yeah. I don't think a lot will actually, Phil. Sure. I can break it off, I think, piece by piece. It's in rotten wood. This empty cone here that's most likely to go. There's quite a lot of brood in here yeah. this time of year. Three 
it worth me. Sorry. Um, it's one of those jobs that we require. This is a minimum deal. Okay, how about if I knot the string? Yeah. going to go in that way up and what I'm going to attempt to do is to keep what I do rest it on there, offer up the cone, how am I going to hold it? I'm thinking something like this. Yeah, put the cone in between. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm sorry about this please, but it's this or certain death. So Queen catcher, I should go and get her that as well. Oh, good point, yeah. Although, yeah, okay. I've got one cone free now. So okay, well, that'll end up in. take it off and rest it so we don't waste our time um, tying that on. Sure. to join the others because they'll need yeah. cover for that brew. Okay. This is going to start getting quite quickly and you know, this cone 
because of that, that crossbar. Wow, the heat in here is amazing. Where my left hand is, the heat inside that, I should have put my measuring equipment. I'm not going to be able to get this comb out in one go, okay. so I'm going to take it off. Yeah. We'll try and tie this one. It's well, this one will be worth on tying, yeah. wouldn't it? Okay. Uh, so if I hold, um, yeah, look, so let me just come forward. Okay. Okay, so the rest and the gravy. Okay. okay so I'm gonna stick to it. I'm gonna go, shall I hold it while you go down and then we'll do it on the floor? Um, just for the moment, so, we, so we're not doing it about 10 feet off. Well, right, we could, or I'm, I'm not sure which is more dangerous really, trying to carry it down like that or trying to turn it like that. If I can steady it, then I can... Yeah, I can okay, I've got it. So I think this was probably one of those July swarms, one of those late swarms. Uh huh. Um, the plan was to go and decided to move these. There's, there's not really a lot of comb in here. And I would have expected, you know, had it been a well established colony, they'd have worked their way right down this cavity. Always carry string. Hmm. I've also got some wire, God knows wire. Um, I've got in the back of my car, I've got some plastic buckets. Yeah. Uh, just for putting lumps like yeah, this. Yeah, that's in. what I think. Okay, well, look, let me. Um, we're ready for the next. I'll go and get a bucket. This, that's one cone, one frame ready to yeah, rock and roll. To, I think I'd like to cut out this rest of this honey cone. Okay. Um, I'm going to make up another one of those, Phil, or do you need me right now? Um, I'm okay at the moment. I'm just cutting lots of honey All right. Well, just I've got more stores in here than I thought, actually. Whether it's enough to get them through the winter, I doubt, but... The pliers... Feels like it's just beginning to rain. Yeah. There we go. Okay, now we've got another case where the comb is partially weakened by that cross bar at this level. I'm going to try, I think, and I'll try to get to the top of this one. Well 
got a lump of free cone here, I'm just going to okay. rest it on the top. You know, I don't want to say this too soon, uh -huh. but they're actually a beautifully tempered bee, aren't they? They're, they're not bad, I only had about six stings, and usually when I've done something silly. Yeah. But they are, they're not bad. So we've, uh, we're 50 minutes into the proceedings and we've got most of the bees into the um, into that box, the Langstroth box. Uh, but there's quite a, still quite a few bees up here. So and it's uh, still a couple of hours away from dusk, I think. So we're going to try and make a platform to put the box. This is all hastily improvised, of course, but none the worse for that. We hope. Okay, now, in your professional judgment, <laughs> that'll hold it, yeah? That'll hold it. Okay. Well, apart from the fact that I've used a crack slate. Yeah. Maybe I'll revise what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> it might not hold it. Uh, it's, it's, we're along the right line, though. This is now officially a hard hat area. <laughs> We don't have any hard hats then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm going to put one, a couple across that way and... Uh, you think that'll take the weight? Yep. Okay. Well, I'll test that, feel that, and uh, it should be alright, yeah. You don't want to hang from it just to check? No, I no? don't. Okay. No, well, shall I say I won't? <laughs> so, um, I'm taking it as a good sign that I see no bees flying out of the box, so I'm hoping that that means that we've got the queen safely inside. We've also got a bunch of honey here and some bees uh, wondering what's going on. So they can be shaken into the box in a moment. Uh, Joe's going to be doing doing a trick up here. Okay, I think that's, I think that's the best but we're going to get actually. I'm thinking that if we stand that yeah on that shelf yeah. with the back off as it is now yeah. Yeah, facing the wall yes. so there's a gap behind it so yeah. the bees hopefully will then find their way into the box yeah. along with their mates okay I can't reach across no, to right. see What if I pull this ladder out and lean it against it to stabilise yeah, that'd it? that'd be good. I mean, it's tricky, Phil. It's a tricky old thing we've got here. <laughs> now, don't do it from that way. Don't lean. That's it. It's all right. I've got it. Because I'm just wondering about the extra weight of the ladder might be pushing down on the slate, Phil. I, I, I would have thought it would just... That's, that's what I'm hoping it's going to do, like stable it like that. Okay. Now these guys need to join their mates. Perhaps just stand that box beside it, and then they can they can walk up the wall if they choose to. There we go. So the cutout's complete now, and we've put the the box back against the the wall for the time being because we want the last bees to find their way in uh, quite a few of them have already have already done that and there's some fanning going on around the edges here so i'm hopeful that that means we've got the queen and that the other bees will will, will follow her in as it were follow her scent um, there's never any guarantees with these things, of course. But, uh, and I wouldn't have done it had it not been um, the only possible course of action, other than leaving them to be killed off. I wouldn't normally attempt to do something like this at this time of year. It's now middle of October, but it is quite mild weather. And as long as we've got the Queen in there, they've got a reasonable chance of getting through the winter now. So. Let's hope. So I'm just going to leave them to settle for a couple of hours and then I'm going to do the final move which will be 
take them away and put them somewhere safe for the winter. So here are the bees from the cutout at Rangerton. A couple of days later, this is the 21st of October 2012, and they're in a Langstroth nuke box, quite a large nuke box made of polystyrene and the, the frames are put in vertically because that was the shape of the comb so it just seemed logical to put the comb in uh, into frames in that direction and so we have to stand the, the hive up this way which means I've created a new entrance uh, on what was what should be the, the base of the hive and uh, the bees are making good use of it and as you can see there's a lot of activity the hive next to it here is also very busy despite it being last week in October a lot of activity here ambient air temperatures around about 10 degrees centigrade maybe a little more maybe 12 but there's pollen coming in there's a strong smell of ivy in the air ivy's in flower there's a lot of food for them, but it's unusual to see that amount of activity at this time of year, I must say. It's almost as if they've, it's almost as if they're experiencing it as a, uh, another spring after that long wet summer. It's almost as if they've, they've started again. Um, this is sort of activity you'd expect to see in May, normally. <laughs> 